we're going to look now at rates. Now we've already looked at ratios. Remember we did the the um, bag with the the different colored marbles in it. Say we had a bag with some marbles in it like this. These were ratios, and with the ratio we were comparing the same thing. So marbles, red marbles and blue marbles, but the units were the same. They were they were all marbles. When it comes to a rate, how a, what makes a rate different than a ratio is the units are different. So here the units are the same in a ratio. They're all marbles. In a rate, the units are different. So for example, this would be an example of a rate. Say you were riding your bike and you went 40 kilometers in two hours. So here, the first thing that we're comparing is distance, which is in kilometers, this, and we're comparing that to time, which is in hours. So the units are different, kilometers and hours. But that would be a rate, 40 kilometers in two hours. And usually we'll write that as a fraction, 40 kilometers per two hours. Here's another example. Let's say you're in the bulk section of a grocery store and you're buying some, I don't know, maybe you're buying some peanuts. And the peanuts cost a dollar forty-nine per. You see the sign that says a dollar forty-nine per a hundred grams. That would be a rate because we have money as one unit and grams as the other unit. And we we might write that as a fraction, a dollar forty-nine per one hundred grams. So here's a couple of examples of rates. Rates are when we're comparing two things and the units are different. Now if we go and look at this example here of the bike that was where you traveled 40 kilometers per two hours, usually when we think of measuring speed, we would think of talking about our speed as kilometers per one hour. So if I had this fraction here, 40 kilometers, for two hours, and I wanted to figure out how much would I go for one hour, how far was my distance traveled for one hour? Well, we could figure this out. If I did 40 kilometers in two hours, then I must have done 20 kilometers in one hour, because all I would need to do is divide this denominator by two. Two divided by two is one. So if I take my numerator and divide it by two, 40 divided by two is 20. When we have a rate where the denominator is 1, denominator is 1, we call this rate a unit rate. So a unit rate is when we compare a certain amount of things, or in this case a distance, per 1 hour. In this case it's in, in hours. So a unit rate is a rate where the second term, or the denominator, is 1. So speed on the, on the highway is always a unit rate. You might see the speed limit posted is 60 kilometers per hour. That would really mean 60 kilometers per 1 hour. And so that would be a unit rate. And unit rates are very useful when we're comparing things say we want to compare things that have different volumes of things that have different prices. Let me show you an example of that. So let's say the question is what is the best buy? Is it four liters of milk for $6.99? Is it two liters of milk for $3.75? Or is it 500 milliliters of milk for a dollar? So we could write these all as rates. So for the first scenario here, that's $6.99 per 4 liters. That's 
that's a rate. In the second example here, $3.75 for 2 liters. And in the third example, I've got $1 for 500 milliliters. Now the problem is, is that these are all different denominators, for different quantities of, of milk. So what we would like to do is we'd like to convert these all to a unit rate. So I'm going to make the denominators on each one of these all out of one liter. So on this first one, if I have four liters of milk, to convert this to a unit rate, I would have to divide the denominator by four, because four divided by four is one. So if I do that to the denominator, I also have to do this to the numerator. So I'm going to take the 699 and divide it by four. So $6.99 divided by four is basically a dollar seventy-five, dollar seventy-five a liter. So the six, the the four liter of milk is really about a dollar seventy-five per one liter of milk. In the second example here, or the second scenario, was two liters of milk for three seventy-five. So I've got to divide this by two, because two divided by two is one. So in my numerator, I'm also going to divide that by two to figure out what the price would be for one liter. So three dollars and seventy-five cents divided by two is a dollar eighty-eight. So we can see now that this milk is actually more expensive than this one. This was a dollar seventy-five for one liter. This is a dollar eighty-eight for a liter. So so far, this is the best buy here. Let's look at our third example. This was for a dollar for 500 milliliters. Well, these are actually different units, milliliters and liters. So we need to know that there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. So if this is 500 milliliters, I would have to multiply this by two because 500 times two is a thousand milliliters. And that's the exact same thing as one liter. So if I have to multiply the denominator by 2 to keep these fractions equivalent or the same, I'm going to multiply the top by 2. And 1 times 2 is 2. So the 500 milliliters of milk for a dollar is really like buying 1 liter of milk for $2. So this is the most expensive. And the question one at the best buy that would be this one right here, a dollar seventy-five for one liter. And so it's difficult to compare them when they're the rates are all in different quantities. But when we convert them all to unit rates, it becomes very evident which one is the best buy. Let's look at another example. Apple juice is sold, let's say, at the store in three different sizes. You can buy a nine hundred and forty five milliliter jar or package of juice for two ninety nine. 512 for dollar 75 and a 1.45 liter for 449. We want to figure out which one is the best buy. So I'm going to write these all as as rates as they were given. So two dollars and 99 cents for 945 milliliters. I got a dollar 75 for 512 milliliters. And we've got a 449 for a 1.45 liters. Well, what I'm going to do here, these are these are kind of odd or not not very nice numbers to work with in the denominator. So I'm going to convert these all to one milliliter. I'm going to figure out the price for one milliliter. Now it's going to be a very small price, but the idea here is to find out which one is is the cheapest. So if I'm going from 945 milliliters down to 1 milliliter, obviously I need to divide that by 945 because 945 divided by 945 would be 1. So I'd have to divide this by also 945. So $2.99 divided by 945 milliliters of stuff now my calculator is giving me this 3.164 and then you see this e to the minus th uh, 3 
So let's put this in scientific notation, which really means that this decimal needs to go to the left. That's what the negative exponent really means. To the left, three places. I'm just going to write that number down here so you see it. 3.16 times 10 to the minus 3. So the, this decimal needs to go left one, two, three places. So I've got to add a couple of zeros in here. One, two, three. So it's really point zero zero three one six dollars per one milliliter. In this next example, or this next scenario, I've got a dollar seventy-five for five hundred twelve milliliters. So to get this to a unit price, I'm going to divide by five twelve. Divide by five twelve. So a dollar seventy-five divided by five twelve is three point four one or three point four two, but the decimal to the left three places. So decimal zero zero three four two per one milliliter. Now on this next one, this is 1.45 liters. So again, remember, there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. So to convert this to milliliters, because we've got to have the same units, I'm going to multiply by a thousand, which just moves the decimal to the right three places. So 1.45 times a thousand is 1,450. So now getting this down to one milliliter, I'm going to have to divide by 1450. And I get point, moving the decimal to the left, 3.0031 dollars. So these are the price per one milliliter. And it's, it's a little bit funny because the money is, is so small here. If you want, we could say, and usually when you go to the store, you don't get the price per one milliliter. So you could always say, okay, I'm going to multiply this by 100 to figure out what the price is for 100 milliliters, a little bit bigger quantity. So multiplying this by 100 would move the decimal to the right two places. So then I'd have 0 0.32 and 0 0.316 I can round to uh, 0.32. So essentially I've got 32 cents or 0 0.32 dollars per 100 milliliters. And on this one, multiplying by 100 to get 100 milliliters in the bottom, times this by 100. This one, moving the decimal to the right two places, would be 0.34, so 34 cents. And on this one, multiplying everything by 100 would be 0.31. So this is the cheapest right here, 31 cents for 100 milliliters. This was 34 cents for 100 milliliters, and this was 32 cents for 100 milliliters. You don't necessarily need to convert everything to 100 milliliters. We can still see this is the cheapest price right here. 0 0.00310 is smaller than this one, and that's smaller than smaller than that one as well. So. Um, this would be our best buy, 0 0.00310 dollars per one milliliter. Or when we convert it all to 100 milliliters, 31 cents for 100 milliliters is how much you would pay for this one. And so this is the, the cheapest uh, apple juice container. Here's another example. Jack ran eight kilometers in two and a half hours. Jill, she ran 10 and a half kilometers in three hours question might be who ran faster. Well, we can write these as rates. So Jack, he's running at eight kilometers for two and a half hours. Jill, she ran 10 and a half kilometers in three hours. 
So again, the problem is, is these you, the units are the same, kilometers and hours, but they're not unit rates. So what I would like to do is I would like to write this for one hour. So I need to divide this by 2.5, because 2.5 divided by 2.5 is 1. And I need to divide the top by 2.5 too. So when I divide the numerator by 2.5, I get 3.2 kilometers per one hour. So he was basically running 3.2 kilometers per hour. Jill, so I need to divide her denominator by 3 to get one hour. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And when I divide the top by 3, I get 3.5. So she ran 3.5 kilometers in one hour. Jack ran 3.2 kilometers in one hour. So I can tell very easily now that I've converted everything to unit rates that Jill ran faster. So when it comes to Jack and Jill running up the hill, Jill got there faster. So to summarize, rates, or a rate is when we compare two things with different units, like 15 kilometers in seven hours. Those are two different units. Or maybe you're measuring your height and you grow in 35 centimeters in three years. Those are rates. And a unit rate is just a rate in which the second term is 1. So instead of 15 kilometers per 7 hours, an example of a unit rate might be 15 kilometers in 1 hour. Now, now there's an example of a unit rate. Or maybe you have grown 12 centimeters per, per year, so per 1 year. So unit rates are rates in which the second term, or the denominator, is 1. And they're good for when we have to compare um, different quantities of things.